What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today we're going to do a little opinion piece on shark influencers. Now I know there's a few of you out there that did want a video on this so here we are. Those of you who regularly watch Shark Bites know that I'm fairly balanced in my arguments when it comes to controversial topics. But today I'm a scientist and a marine biologist so I'm going to be coming at this topic from a scientist and marine biologist perspective. There's already an inherent bias there. I'd like to remind you all though here at the start that this is an opinion piece. This is my opinion. Some people might have a different opinion to me and that's okay. The world would be a much more boring place if everyone thought the same. Right, let's dive in. Influencers. Now, I know that a lot of you are going to cringe when you hear that word and to be honest, so do I. With the rise of social media, influencers seem to burst onto our screens and they show no signs of going away anytime soon. Generally, they can be defined as people who have amassed a large amount of followers on a particular social media site and they have the capacity to influence those followers. Clues in the name, really. Initially, I suppose we start seeing them on social media sites like Instagram, where they're trying to sell you certain products, blah, blah, blah. But then we started getting people called wildlife influencers, which is pretty much the same thing. A person who's amassed a large following, but their content this time revolves around wild animals. I could spend ages talking to you about Brother Nature or the real Tarzan, but today we're going to be looking at purely marine-based influencers and specifically sharks. In the last 10 or 15 years or so, scientists have learned a lot about the dangers of harassing or disturbing wildlife. Chasing them, touching them, crowding around them can all have real dire consequences on their overall health and well-being. With animals in general, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to spot if they're stressed or not, but under the surface, physiological damage is taking place when they're put under large amounts of stress. I could go into the science of glucocorticoids. Actually, do you know what? I will go into the science of glucocorticoids because it's important. So bear with me on this one. It'll only be brief. When an animal perceives something to be a threat, its adrenal glands produce something known as glucocorticoids, otherwise known as the stress hormone. This is a normal response and humans do it as well. And it plays into the whole fight or flight response thing. But the problem is when an animal is repeatedly exposed to stressful things in its environment, it continues to produce those glucocorticoids. And chronic exposure to this stress hormone can badly impact the body. It can even damage the brain. Specifically, it damages the hippocampus, which is named after seahorses, because I guess it kind of looks like a seahorse, but I digress. What I'm trying to say is even when an animal looks like it's okay, we have no idea what stress hormones are under the surface. I think the best example I can think of off the top of my head is if you were to come across a baby rabbit that thing is going to freeze, right? You can pick it up, you can touch it, you can cuddle it, it's not going to move. But that little rabbit is probably having the quietest heart attack you have ever seen. Okay, there we go. Science tangent over for now. Who let me start talking about glucocorticoids? <laughs> So harassing wildlife is basically a big no, and that includes touching or overcrowding, etc. The problem is, is that all of these things are what get the clicks for social media and wildlife influencers. The constant need to get closer, push harder for the best shot to get the most likes, the ethics of it start to become incredibly questionable. And this is mostly problematic when you get individuals online who are doing this with the caveat that they're actually helping the wildlife by raising awareness about their conservation issues. <laughs> Raising awareness. I've always laughed at that because these days that is a pretty empty phrase. It doesn't mean anything. And this brings me on to Ocean Ramsey. Before we start on Ocean Ramsey though, I did reach out to her via email and Instagram to ask if she'd like to appear on Shark Bites to give us her side of the argument. And as you can see here, I received no reply. Loads of you wanted me to talk about Ocean Ramsey after that terrible TikToks video I did a few weeks back. Make sure you click that link there and give it a watch, by the way. So, who is Ocean Ramsey and what does she actually do? Well, based on her Wikipedia page, it just says she's a free diver and a model who runs her own ecotourism business called One Ocean Diving in Hawaii. Although we shouldn't base it all on Wikipedia now, should we? So, on her website, we get a little bit more info, which says that she's a marine biologist and she has a master's in ethology. Unfortunately, I've been able to find no information as to where she got these qualifications, perhaps a university or a school. For example, I have those qualifications. So I have an undergraduate degree in zoology from the University of Exeter. And then I've also got a master's degree in biological sciences, again, from the University of Exeter. Usually as part of your master's, you will write a thesis. And then this thesis at bare minimum will be published on the university's research database, which is freely available for anyone to find. So let's take a look here. If I type my name into Google Scholar alongside the word thesis, bang, up pops my master's thesis right there. But if I do the same with Ocean Ram, Ramsey, 
nothing. In true Sherlock Holmes fashion, this strikes me as a little strange. So why could this be? Well, if we were being kind, we could say perhaps Ocean Ramsey wasn't the name that she used when she was at university doing these qualifications. Or perhaps because we don't have the name of the university or institution, it's just not coming up in search terms. If we were being cynical, however, we could say she may not have those qualifications at all. I'll let you all make up your own minds on that one. So Ramsey made headline news a few years ago in Hawaii, where she was pictured and filmed swimming next to and touching a very very large great white shark. The white shark had been feeding on a floating whale carcass in the area and had essentially eaten itself into a food coma. <laughs> Sharks do like to oversatiate themselves because they tend not to know when their next meal is coming from, so they eat as much as they can when they've got food. Massive fatties. <laughs> and realistically, it's likely because of this, the shark showed zero interest in Ocean or any of the other people in the water. The pictures make it look amazing. It looks like Ocean is just alone swimming with the shark, but the video of the encounter is a different story. So you've got Ocean diving down, actively touching that shark there, which she claims was to maintain distance from it or to redirect the shark away from boat propellers somehow. And then you've got a shit ton of people surrounding the shark from all sides, splashing around in the water. It's an absolute mess. Then there's a ton of misinformation thrown into the actual Instagram post itself, saying that this was a shark called Deep Blue, when in fact it was a different shark called Hyoli Girl. Okay, it's not the worst mistake to make, admittedly. But the post also suggests that the shark was pregnant, even though it's pretty well known that white sharks tend to swell to the size of a house after they've gorged on a whale carcass. So without ultrasound, it's really difficult to tell whether a shark is pregnant or just massively full. So she posted all of these clips, and of course, as you would expect, it went insanely viral. But in the immediate aftermath of these videos going viral, you had some pretty bad short-term effects. The following day, after all those Ocean Ramsey clips went viral, dozens of boats visited that whale carcass, which forced the Hawaii authorities to release a statement telling people to not get in the water because, of course, it would be extremely dangerous to get into the water around a whale carcass where a white shark has been spotted. And it wasn't only dangerous for the people, it had a negative impact on the sharks as well. Because that following day, all those boats and all those people in the water scared the bloody sharks away. <laughs> I laugh, but this is undoubtedly going to have a negative impact on the sharks because they've been forced out of an area where they could have had a really invaluable meal. Ramsey was of course criticized by marine biologists and other scientists pretty much across the board at the time of the incident. But her rebuttal to that criticism was pretty weak. She went on to say, and I quote here, the main goal is protection for sharks. I need people to see they're not monsters. I think in this day and age, I'd be inclined to say the majority of people now know that sharks aren't monsters. Yes, okay, there's still probably some people with those beliefs, but I wouldn't say it's a majority anymore. But then also because of what Ramsey says and does, you've got people on the complete opposite end of that spectrum. These are the people that think sharks are these animals that can't hurt you and you can touch them and poke them and there'd be no repercussions if you did it. What we've actually got to do is promote the middle ground in between those two extreme opinions that says, hey, Sharks aren't mindless killers, everyone, but also at the same time, these are apex predators and can be pretty dangerous. So we've got to respect them as apex predators. That's a really important middle ground that a few more people probably need to understand. These animals are not psycho mindless killing machines, but at the same time, they're not cuddly playthings either and can probably rip your limbs off if they wanted to. I think I responded to a comment about Ocean Ramsey on one of my previous videos that said something along the lines of, you wouldn't go on safari, jump out the Jeep and grab the tail of a lion, would you? I think it frustrates me when I see Ramsey doing these things and then saying it's all about saving the sharks. Because you don't need to get videos or pictures of you riding sharks to raise awareness about their conservation. Raising awareness doesn't equate to solving the problem, by the way. Let's be clear on that one as well. The thing about sharks is that these animals are beautiful enough just to take pictures of them to raise awareness. You don't need to be riding or touching them to do that. And if you're a clever photographer, you can let the image tell a story. Take this picture, for example, which was taken by Justin Hoffman. He didn't have to touch the seahorse or cradle it in his hands for a photo opportunity. He just took a photograph that sends a conservation message without the need for all of that. Looking at all the Ocean Ramsey stuff in the long term as well, we can also see problems arising. More and more people are seeing these types of videos on the internet and they're inherently presenting sharks as playthings. You're getting influencers and models being bitten by nurse sharks because they're trying to get photos like this. And when this happens, ironically, it's actually pretty counterproductive for shark conservation. So a few people, probably including Ramsey herself, would say that she is doing research on these sharks and that's helping them. Donning my Sherlock Holmes hat again, I went on the search to see if I could find any scientific research papers written or co-authored by Ocean Ramsey. And the result was the same again, nothing. 
Not one peer-reviewed piece of scientific literature written or co-authored by Ocean Ramsey. She does have a few self-published books about shark behavior, but the problem with books is that they don't have to go through the very rigorous peer review process that scientific research papers have to. So you can essentially say what you like in a book with little to no fact-checking. It goes against the core principle of the scientific community, which is the rigorous peer review process. My nurse shark paper was in the peer review process for the best part of the last 10 months, rigorously being checked and edited and checked again to make sure that I wasn't just making it all up. Okay, so she's not got any peer-reviewed research papers, but that doesn't mean that she's not researching or collecting data on sharks. Perhaps she could collaborate with other scientists and share that data so it can be used in other people's research to help sharks. Well, sadly, no, she doesn't do this either, at least with me anyway. Ramsey regularly posts Instagram pictures of sharks entangled within marine debris, which coincidentally was the topic of my first research paper. There really hadn't been much research done on sharks and marine debris until I came along and wrote the paper. I don't want to sound like I'm blowing my own trumpet here and I hate doing this, but it's important to know this for the story. The knowledge that we have about sharks and marine debris literally comes from the paper that I wrote. And over the years, I've tried to get in touch with Ramsey and her team at One Ocean Diving to see if they wanted to help collaborate on this issue with me. She's clearly got a ton of data on entangled sharks. She literally posts about it all the time. And the data that she's got would have been really helpful to add to our shark entanglement database. But after all the emails that I sent to her and her company about collaborating on this shark entanglement thing, I never got a response. If she had provided that data, it could have then been added to our database where we could have identified hotspots for entanglement for sharks and rays around the world. And that could have eventually led to actual policy change from governments who could have created laws to help stop shark entanglement from happening. She even cited my paper on an Instagram post she did a few years back on shark entanglement. And it had a little sentence next to it saying, this data is readily available for other researchers and then used the hashtag collaborative research and I didn't hear a single thing back. Not one response to any of my emails asking for a collaboration on this. I actually sound so salty right now. <laughs> But this is important. When you offer to share your data and collaborate, you should follow through with it because this is what can help sharks. Scientific research is what helps sharks. Scientific research is what's presented to governments and policymakers who make the decisions who can change the laws that actually impact the sharks. Now, don't get me wrong. I do think there is a place for wildlife influencers in conservation. And there's a place for them where their images and content can be used in tandem with research to present to governments to enact policy change. The reach of wildlife influencers is truly incredible and it can really expose conservation issues to a very, very wide audience. But importantly, it's got to be done carefully. It's got to be done in a way that A, doesn't present the animals as something that they're not, and B, doesn't negatively impact the animals themselves. At the end of the day, Ocean Ramsey is a brand. She's a business. And the sharks, plus her very large following, helps her earn money. You only have to take one look at her website to see how much stuff she's selling. You've got all of her books, you've got her online courses, merchandise, shark snorkeling trips, speaker events. It's all there if you're willing to pay a hefty price for it. Wow, okay, a lot to digest there. I think I definitely went off on a tangent rant about Ocean Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough from me then on this. I want to know what you all think. What do you think of shark influencers? What do you think of Ocean Ramsey? Let me know in the comments below. And in true shark social media fashion, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark by Shark below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.